Hi, my name is Tim Sika, and I'm host and producer of Celluloid Dreams, the movie show. And with me today is the film critic for Celluloid Dreams, the movie show, and GroucherReviews.com, Peter Canavesi. And what are we going to do today, Peter? We are going to talk about... Twilight Time. Twilight uh, Time video. Yes. Right. Uh, at TwilightTimeMovies.com. Yes. Uh, which is uh, a label, a, a distributor that puts out uh, classic films. Yes. Um, it's... Uh, maybe somewhat akin to something like Warner Archive, but in this case, the studios uh, kind of farm out uh, to Twilight Time uh, uh, the, the, the sort of films that uh, they don't have the the bandwidth to handle themselves. And then uh, Twilight Time does the work of putting loving care into creating these special editions in a way that film fans would appreciate. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a Blu-ray label now. It was formed in 2011 by Brian Jameson and Nick Redman. Uh, the film historian, Nick Redman. And music producers and documentary filmmakers. Right, yes. Uh, and, um, yeah, they put out four or five titles. Lately, it's been five titles uh, every month. It's actually hard to keep up with them, which is great. Um, and while it was formed you know, mostly with an eye to highlighting 1950s and 1960s content and kind of the CinemaScope era uh, and uh, that sort of thing, uh, it's branched out significantly uh, more and more, I think, over time. Uh, they have deals with Fox uh, for some of their library titles and um, Columbia, uh, Sony. Uh, so most of the titles are uh, from those two um, you know, studios. But there's also titles from Film 4 that they've acquired, like right. uh, some classic British films, Ken Loach, Paul Greengrass, those sorts of films. Um and then the, they have the uh, MGM UA library, right? Yes, MGM UA. Uh, yeah. a, a lot, I, forgot, I forgot. A lot of the titles are from there. Uh, and they also have Orion titles, so like some old Woody Allen and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's and great, great uh, special, uh, features. special features yeah. on this, too. Uh, I want to uh, just quote uh, one of the founders of the label that you mentioned, Brian Jameson. He said when he was talking about the purpose of the label, he said, and uh, I think this is significant to repeat here, he said, Twi quote, Twilight Time will be serving both the collectible drive of film enthusiasts, because there are a lot of people that still, like us, right. collect DVDs uh, and, and kind of stay away from streaming and that kind of thing. And he continues, in a larger sense, the cause of cinema literacy. And I think they they uh, fulfill that purpose on a regular basis. I would agree. And, uh, and we're going to uh, talk about the latest uh, batch of Twilight Time titles right now. Yes, and along uh, the way, we'll talk about more of the good things that make Twilight Time great. So, yes, yes. Uh, so first in the stack here is Garden of Evil, uh, which, of course, is a Henry Did Hack you enjoy holding that up to, to the camera there? <laughs> well, I, I always wanted to be Vanna White. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a Henry Hathaway picture uh, from Fox. Um and uh, stars Gary Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, Susan Hayward, and Richard Widmark, the inimitable Richard Widmark. Yeah, um, who's always good. He's yeah. always good. I always, and sort of uh, neglected. Yes, yeah. yes. He has a certain way of, of talking that I find very appealing. Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. He does. Yeah. A certain and, speech uh, rhythm and sound to his voice, which is very appealing. But, right, and... Yeah. and uh, uh, Garden of Evil is... Um, and that's on full display in Garden of Evil. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, which is sort of a noirish Western in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of a, a dark-toned Western. Um, and, you know, a lot of 50s Westerns were, but uh, you know, the, the, I think that's what makes this stand out a bit from the, the pack of 50s Westerns is that it is uh, a little more a little more dark. And we were talking earlier about uh, that this type of film uh, in context, uh, again, uh, you, we, we, we both are a fan of uh, Julie Kirgo's uh, notes. She talks about how the film uh, was a, a sort of a, a, a derogueur type of release in terms of it being the standard kind of fare that audiences went to the theaters to see. When yeah. you would look at something like that today, I don't think audiences would sit for the first 10 minutes because it's it's uncompromising in terms of its pacing right. and it's a, it's a character driven piece. It's almost like a play. Um, and, yeah. Uh, uh, well, the byplay between maybe uh, Cooper and Widmark in particular. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and just all the psychological stuff that's like going right. on between all the characters and stuff is really, really yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trashing today's audiences <laughs> <laughs> subtly, right. but uh, yeah. No, no, and and I, and that's it. I, that kind of makes it, I think, for me, more fascinating to just watch mm. uh, today. Um, you know, as. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a time capsule. It's one of the things that's fun about Twilight Time is, uh, I mean, yes, it's it's a great way to revisit titles that 
people have, you know, saw in their youth, or it's also a great way to discover titles and sort of remember what it, what Hollywood used to be like when it yeah. used to be kind of the standard issue kind of thing you might expect to see at the cinema when you would go. Um, yeah, and I'm jealous of Julie Kirgo's writing. So yeah, yeah. The, the liner notes are fantastic. There's little, little booklets in every uh, and uh, Yeah, we every probably case. also should mention that one of the, the highlights of these discs are, are the fact that they have an isolated uh, uh, soundtrack score. Yeah, score. yeah every, every uh, disc, has, well, almost every disc has much. an isolated score track. And right. uh, this one, of course, is... Uh, uh, from one of the greatest of all Hollywood composers, Bernard Herrmann. Right. Uh, and uh, thunders very nicely uh, in my home theater. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's fantastic. And then there's also on here an audio commentary uh, with film and music historians, including Nick Redman. Uh, and then uh, some special features that I think Fox might have previously produced uh, that those always find their way onto these titles in addition to the newly produced ones by Twilight Time. Okay, let's move along to uh, our, the next title in the batch here, Cat Baloo. Cat Baloo, yeah. yes. <laughs> Which for years, uh, you know, it was a popular title in uh, like syndication on television. And, yes. And I, and I never had any idea what that title meant. <laughs> and and, and even, even now, when I sat down to watch the movie, I still kind of think, okay, Cat Baloo, what exactly? What does that mean? And of course, it's the name. It's the character uh, Jane Fonda plays in this movie. It is That's the right. title character, um, and uh, and it's sung many many times yes, by is. the uh, the troubadours here. The sort of uh, Greek. It chorus. becomes the the proverbial earworm after yes. you watch this movie. You you can't get that song out of your yeah. head for, Stubby for weeks. Kay. Yes, Stubby K and Nat King Cole are the the pair of. Uh, the Greek uh, chorus yes. in this movie, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a comedy western, so it's a change of pace from Garden of Evil, to be yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, a fun movie too, don't yeah. you think? Oh yeah, and yeah. historically significant as well, of course, right. because Lee Marvin, uh, who's Academy Award winning Best Actor, was a little upset that year. Right, Remember, yeah. Rod Steiger yeah. gagged on camera, if yes. you recall. Yeah. <laughs> he did. For, yeah. He did. He actually went. Yeah. He, he held on to that for until right. the end of his life. Yes, I think. He did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but a really, really great comic performance, I think. It is, yeah. And there's yeah. an interesting thing in the special features about the directors saying, you know, Lee Marvin was playing it for comedy and the crew was just loving it and they, could, they couldn't contain themselves, they were laughing. And, and he, he said to Marvin, well, why don't you try playing it for tragedy? The director, Elliot Silverstein. Yes, Elliot yes, Silverstein. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he said, try playing it for tragedy. And then he said it got funnier. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so... Yeah, Cat Baloo. I don't know. What else should we say? And Jane Fonda, too. A star-making performance for her. Oh, yeah. She's, she's terrific in it. Really good. Really funny and, and beautiful. And really a nicely shot movie, too. Yeah, so right. Nice to uh, look at. All right. Let's move right along here to uh, one of, I, I think, uh, would, would I be presumptuous in saying I think that this is your favorite title in this batch? This may well be my favorite title in the batch, yeah. Uh, it's Eureka, um, a film I saw some years ago and I newly appreciated even more, I think, when I watched it again, uh, by Nicholas Rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, and while I was watching the film, I was thinking, how do I describe Nicholas Rogue? And the wor first word that came to mind was distinctive. Distinctive, the yeah. Same word Julie Kirgo uses in her liner notes. Well, great uh, minds, you know. Yes, great alike, minds think alike. Yeah. Now, uh, so, uh, yeah, Nicholas Rogue, he's just on his own wavelength, and he's uncompromising about it. Uh, he makes no concessions to the viewer. He just... He says, look, this is who I am. This is the kind of movie I'm going to make. And you roll with it or you yeah, don't. And you don't. So, uh, and you would best be to, to roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, uh, it's terrific. When, and, yeah, and, and when you do, it's sort of like, you know, it's going, going on somebody's fever dream, really. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. unrelentingly bizarre right. and Yeah, it's definitely bizarre. Um, and and it's, it's rooted in a kind of like Citizen Kane-esque story. And he alludes to that visually as well in the film. But it's it's a totally unique film, despite that. Uh, based on a true story. Based on a true story, yeah. which I didn't know until uh, recently. Um, I and, and I had never seen the film before. I, yeah. I had heard of it peripherally, but never yeah. saw it. So, if, for, for, if nothing else, it's got this towering lead performance by Gene Hackman, one of the great uh, actors of the era. Everybody's good yeah. in here. Teresa Russell is good yep. in here. Rutger, uh, Rutger Howard, Howard is yeah. good in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a really interesting, slimy character. You can't can never quite pin right, down. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's it's a I, for me, it's a fascinating story. I love that it's bizarre. Um, I, I just love movies that are doing something a little different yeah. instead of seeing the same old thing all the time uh yeah not a very well received film either when it came oh, out no yeah no, and i don't movie. think a commercial success no, at all no, yeah no. but i should also just point out uh another great thing about eureka is that 
uh, it's produced by Jeremy Thomas. And if, if people don't know, Jeremy Thomas is like the hero of independent cinema and and, and of allowing filmmakers like Nicholas yeah. Rogue to just do their thing, do and their not thing, get in their way. Yeah, with no interference yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, right. yeah, to good effect too. Yeah. Okay, so let's. What do we got here next? <laughs> Should we do the? Yeah, let's do. Let's do the Garland. All right. So uh, next up is perhaps uh, the most. Uh, I don't know. In some ways, this was the most striking movie in the in the set, not because of the style of it, like Eureka, but because of the performance by Judy Garland, which is probably the most visceral performance in the whole stack here. Um, Julie Garland's last film, right, nineteen sixty three. Yep. I could go on singing. Uh, directed by. Um, Ronald Neem, who did uh, the long distance. The prime, uh, the prime of Miss Jean Brody, which right. is also available from Twilight Time. Right. And uh, he's probably best known for the Poseidon adventure. Yeah, right. Yes. Unfortunately, he had, perhaps. Yeah, he, was, uh, he, had, he had a lot of issues with that being his most commercially successful film because it was right. not the kind of film that he really relished right. doing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, this is a film that is laden with performance footage of Judy Garland, you know, at this turning point in her life. Yeah. Uh, she's, she was, you know, reportedly on the set, just pretty much of a mess. And yet she would, if she, if she showed up at all, if she showed up at all, but yeah. she pulls together in these just like, kind of like grabbing you through the screen moments of drama. Um, and, uh, the liner notes also talk about the brilliant improv that she did that, the in the director, hospital scene near the yeah, end. In the yeah. hospital scene where the director just sort of said, sort of like, I'm not going to lose this. i got to you know, make sure we get this. Um, in a lot of other respects, it's sort of boilerplate uh, melodrama of yeah. the period. Well, it's based on a, on, a, on a British TV teleplay, which uh, they were producing, I guess, dozens of those, right. uh, uh, you know, monthly. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty... And yet the autobiographical synergy with Garland's life is just... I don't know. What do you say about that? It, yeah. it makes it also just more visceral. Right. And uh, on this particular issue, too, I want to point out that there are two um, commentary tracks, and actually both of them complement each other. There's uh, mm -hmm. one by uh, uh, historians Nick Redman, Julie Kirigo, and I think Lem Dobbs, and then the other one is by uh, David DeVal and, uh, geez, I'm, I'm blanking on the other name. Uh, what, what is the other gentleman's uh, name yeah um, and Stephen Peros right who focus on different aspects oh I it's um, not Julie Kurgo it was actually Lawrence Terman was on the other one that's he right. was the producer yes. of the movie that's right and yeah. he tells some great stories he's still going strong like in his 90s I think he's still teaching at UCLA yeah. but it's uh, and he also wrote a great book called uh, So You Want to Be a Producer which mm -hmm. is like essential reading for anybody interested in producing but uh, yeah both both you know, looking at it, you, you you might get this and you go, oh, two commentary tracks, but they both illuminate each other. The information is just is priceless. And I wish we had more time to talk about that. But people hopefully yeah. will be will dig in, dig in. And I mean, that's, keen that's on what these are for. They're for film collectors, right. the kind of people who would want to get that kind of depth of yes. commentary. Yeah. But a really, really good disc. Another in the uh, mm. Great discs. I guess we should probably mention too that she plays opposite Dirk Bogart. Dirk, he's, yeah, he's, he's who, uh, who, who uh, 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 David Val actually credits for uh, having gotten Judy Garland through the movie, and right. and a lot of yeah, truth in friends, that because yeah. they were really close friends, and yeah. she was a mess during the film, and he, you know, and in the famous scene where she's improvising, he just goes with it, uh, and right. uh, yeah. you know, made it happen. Okay, yeah. what do we? Okay, oh, okay, last of the back. Yeah, this is. Um, <laughs> Appassionata. Appassionata. Yeah, you have to yeah. say it like that, too. Uh, directed by Gianluigi Calderon mm. uh, from 1974. Yes. Um, and I, I suppose the, the kind of the star that we are most familiar with is actually Valentina Cortese. Um, she's not really the, the star of the movie, but she... Uh, she gives she, the movie its she, emotional heft. Yes, she does. She um, makes the biggest impression, let's yeah, say. Uh, yeah, it turns it into a Greek tragedy. Uh, Probably most famous for her role in Day for Night, Defense right, of Tufo. Yeah. yeah, Oscar nominated for that performance, too. But. Um, yeah, she's the best known in the cast, yes. I would say. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, how do we describe this movie? Wow. Uh, to me, I think uh, Kirgo does a great job of kind of spinning it in the notes to be... Uh, 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 something of an art film, she says, uh, which is true, but I, I think it also made me think of the work of Zalman King. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's, sort yeah. of a, it's a kind of a soft core movie that, that with aspirations to, to to do more, but but doesn't, really at its heart doesn't quite deliver. It's yeah. really a soft core movie, but yeah. uh, and, and 
Uh, it is interesting. Uh, it's it is compelling. It's not boring. Not at all. At all. Uh, so I think it is worth watching. But if nothing uh, else, you wonder where it all, where it's all going to go. Right. Where it's right. going to wind up. And uh, there's you know, <laughs> I don't know how much we should say about it. there's there's. Uh, I think people should just experience <laughs> this movie. There's an element should, of incest to the movie too. Uh, an in, element. In this, yeah. In this A component. Sex yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty out there, uh, but not in the same way Eureka is, but uh, yeah. more in the sort of like. Um, and like lush eroticism right kind of and in its own in its own distinctive way yeah right yeah. okay all right so we are um that's it for the 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 latest the, uh yeah. we'll we'll let's do this again they yeah. uh, twilight time's got so many great titles and we could uh yeah let's do this again we'll wrap it up for now uh my name is tim sika a host of cellular dreams with Peter Canavesi of GroucherReviews.com and film critic for cellular dreams and uh we're going to sign out for now and we'll be back so Tune in again.